from the News Center in high definition. This is News Channel 8 on your side today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to News Channel 8 Today. I'm Rod Carter. I'm Gail Guayardo. Today is Thursday, April 11th. First this morning, let's go to Storm Team 8 meteorologist Lee Spann. She's in the forecast center with a mild wake-up weather report. Yeah, you may have to remind yourself that it is April because it feels a little bit more like June this morning with higher humidity and higher temperatures as well. It's 73 degrees right now in Tampa. We're at 72 in Lakeland, 71 in Brooksville, 71 in Sarasota, just well above average. So a bit muggy, partly cloudy and 73 at 9 a.m. We make it to 81 just at lunchtime with afternoon highs in the mid 80s. Just like we would typically see in the summer, some afternoon storms will develop along the sea breezes, but this is all out ahead of a cold front. We'll track that front for you coming up. But first, got to get you out on the roadways this morning, Leslie. And so far, it is a pretty light drive on our Bay Area interstates. We're looking very good on I-4 throughout the Lakeland area, no delays. We've got a little bit of debris out there on the roadway in Brandon, Kings Avenue, right around Lumsden Road, possibly a box in lanes. So you want to be on the lookout for that. Meanwhile, I-75 looks very good coming out of Pasco County, and I want to show my new camera. Let's pull this out. This is a shot of I-75 right at Bruce B. Downs. This was going to come in handy, especially for those of you who commute through the new Tampa area. That's a look at the roadways. Now let's check in with Rod and Gail. Happening today, the next chapter in the case of the Hillsborough County parents accused of kidnapping their children. Joshua and Sharon Haken wake up to a very different reality, reality today after spending their first full night in jail. In just a matter of hours, they are going before a judge and investigators brought the couple back from Cuba early Wednesday morning. They were hiding out in their sailboat with their two sons, Cole and Chase. News Channel 8's Melissa Beckman is live this morning at the Hillsborough County Courthouse to explain what the next step in this case is. Melissa? Sharon and Joshua Haken were each booked into jail yesterday on several felony charges. And in about two hours now, a Hillsborough County judge will read them those charges and tell them if they're allowed out on bond. Joshua, are you guys going to still try and get the kids back? Josh Haken didn't say a word as deputies led him into the Hillsborough County Jail early Wednesday morning. Just hours before, he and his wife were aboard their sailboat in Cuba with their two sons, Cole and Chase. We did set up a team that consisted of uh, local, state, and federal agents that actually uh, departed uh, the Tampa area and went uh, to Cuba and actually uh, met with the uh, authorities there. Investigators say the Hakens had kidnapped their boys in Tampa just one day after a judge ordered custody to their grandmother, Patricia. Based on the information that we have, what's happened since then, um, you know, we, we tend to agree that, you know, the courts clearly made the right decision, you know. This News Channel 8 exclusive video captured the first moments the family got back on U.S. soil Wednesday morning. It could also be the last time the four are together, at least for a long while. Their voyage at sea is over, but their journey through through the legal system is just beginning. And the first step in that long process is their first appearance hearing this morning. And also happening today, Colin Chase's grandfather has scheduled a press conference and he says his two grandsons will be there with him. Rod? It'd be interesting to see what he has to say, Melissa. Absolutely. He did make a very brief statement to the media yesterday morning, and that was right before the plane landed, and that was before he was reunited with Colin Chase. So we'll be very anxious to hear what he has to say. All right, Melissa, thank you very much for that live report. And of course, our coverage of this story continues right now on the homepage of WFLA.com. A tragic story to tell you out of Pinellas County this morning. A two-year-old girl is seriously injured after a horrific accident involving a riding lawnmower. She was accidentally run over by a lawnmower at a home off of Hollow Ridge Road in the Westlake Village neighborhood in Palm Harbor. Investigators say it happened as the father was driving the lawnmower. The accident severed both of the child's legs and her hands. Emergency crews flew her to Tampa General Hospital. We'll told the parents were also being treated for hysteria. We are following breaking news right now of a shipwreck in Portugal. Let's go straight to Adrian Pedersen. Gail just got this video into the newsroom a few minutes ago. Check out these choppy waters. It's when two people died in the shipwreck off the coast of central Portugal. Bad conditions caused a police vessel to overturn during the rescue operation. One of the victims was a member of the sailboat crew. The other, a police officer, trying to aid in that rescue. Six other people went to the hospital. Rod. 
Happening today, the first step toward expanding background checks on gun buyers. Today, we will get the first hint of just how big this fight is going to be to pass gun control legislation in Washington, D.C. Now, the Senate is expected to vote to begin that debate. 60 votes are needed to override a potential filibuster, which some Republicans have threatened to do. Under a bipartisan deal, background checks for gun buyers would be expanded to gun shows and to the internet. A new NBC Wall Street Journal poll out this morning finds 55% favor stricter gun laws, down six points from the, a month before, with Democratic supporters outnumbering Republicans three to one. This morning, a group of firefighters are safe after a medical call turned into a hostage situation in a suburban Atlanta home. After a long standoff, SWAT teams decided to storm that house. That flashbang device allowed SWAT teams to enter the home and then exchange gunfire with the suspect who died in the shootout. One SWAT member was shot but is expected to be okay this morning. All four firefighters suffered superficial injuries when that flash grenade detonated. So far, the suspect has not been identified. New this morning, the lens controversy continues. Hundreds of people are expected to pack St. Petersburg's Mahaffey Theater tonight for a huge event to support the lens, downtown St. Petersburg's new pier design. Well, up until now, we've mostly heard from groups against the lens. Well, now one St. Petersburg man says it's time to hear both sides of the story. That's from the air, it looks like a toilet seat, and it will be used as a toilet seat by the seabirds. In this YouTube video presented by the backers of Stop the Lens, it's clear these concerned citizens look down on the design coming full circle to the looping bridges. That's because it is such a stupid idea. When a St. Petersburg resident heard about the campaign to stop the lens, he reached out to the men at a public forum. So I went down to the Saturday morning market and it wasn't a conversation. It was a small group of people that I believe were spreading misinformation like there'll be nothing to do there. You won't be able to fish off the pier. There'll be no restaurants. And to me, that wasn't a conversation. It Sullivan was sees the lens as a work of art and so do other local artists. Tonight, more than 40 will join forces with Sully at a huge event he's throwing at Mahaffey Theater called Wow St. Pete. I am really happy that the artist community is coming down and embracing this. Um, when you look at the, the Dali, which I'm looking at right now, and you look at what St. Petersburg has to offer the world as an arts destination, it, it's amazing. And tonight, you will see other amazing pieces as artists put the final touches on their work, including this one. Some rejected the Eiffel Tower in France a century ago, but the artist that created this sculpture says today it is iconic and feels the lens is St. Petersburg's future. But 50 years from now, that's all people are going to talk about is how we revolutionized our waterfront with a 21st century design that, you know, put us on the map as far as architecture, art, and things to do in downtown St. Petersburg. The Wild St. Pete party is tonight at Mahaffey Theater. It's free to attend, but you do have to go online to print out a ticket. 400 people have already done so to see the art, fashion, and photography show. There will be food there. If you want more information, check out WFLA.com and click on links mentioned. All right, your Saturday mail service is not going away in August. U.S. Postal Service is backing away from that cost-cutting plan. Lawmakers passed a spending bill preventing the Postal Service from reducing delivery days without congressional approval. And and that will force the post office to continue six day per week delivery. It was hoping to save $2 billion a year by stopping Saturday mail service. The Florida Letter Carriers Union president says the post office needs a shakeup in management. Is this a win for consumers? Absolutely it is. And we've been fighting for this for a long time. But what we're looking for is a long term solution. The Postal Service lost almost $16 billion last year and is on track to lose billions more this year. Now to a story that is all new this morning. More signs that the housing market is slowly bouncing back. Home foreclosures are at their lowest levels in more than five years. According to foreclosure listings from Realty Track, home repossessions fell 3% in March from the previous month and are down 23% from March 2012. Foreclosure filings are down 12% from the previous quarter. A suspected tornado caused a lot of damage in Arkansas. Yeah, and a semi-driver was caught right in the middle of that wicked weather. Well, all the thing I could do was pray and ask the Lord to, you know, to not let me die. Still ahead, you're going to hear what happened to him when that storm hit. And then teens reeling a great white shark off the Florida coastline. We're going to tell you how long it took to reel it in coming up. Then... 
No, he's not responding to the great white shark. He's responding to a tiger shark um, that he had to compete with for the same tuna that he was reeling in. Can you guess which one got the fish? Hint, hint, hint. That's coming up at 646. Uh, great stories this morning. It is my and muggy. We have checked in with our weather watcher Patty in Newport Ritchie. She's starting her day at 71. We're going to warm up to 85. It's also going to be a little bit breezy along with the humid day. About a 30% chance of afternoon storms, but a cold front approaches us tonight. Still a low of 71. I'll tell you when that cold front gets here coming up. It's 640 and you're watching News Channel 8 today.